Hi everyone, welcome to this month's tutorial. The subject for the next few tutorials is having a dive into the Cycles uh, render engine. Now, there's a couple of reasons that I am uh, going down this path. Uh, while a lot of my work has been in the Blender internal renderer, uh, because you know it doesn't require a lot of heavy lifting on the software part to render 2D images the way that I've been working and developing these methods. However, in the upcoming releases of Blender, the internal render is going to take more and more of a back seat, um, which means that as new render engines are, are developed and brought to the fore, uh, there's one very exciting one called Eevee, which is a real-time render engine. Cycles is the alternative which sort of still gives us access to freestyle, as well as the, uh, the passes that we've come to get acquainted with to create comic book illustration renders. I'll begin by saying that I am not an expert in Cycles, uh, but what I have done is found a few ways to ease the transition from what I've been teaching in Blender internal to Cycles without too much fuss. Now, Cycles is a, a huge, huge subject uh, to cover, and I'm not going to presume I know everything about it. That is definitely not the focus of these tutorials. I'm pretty sure that at times I do things and you guys are going to comment and say, you should have done it this way. There's an easier way to do that, or why don't you do a, B, and C. But my goal here and my focus is basically to simplify the techniques and begin to show you bits of the Cycles engine which differ from what we have come to know. So the best way that I thought of doing this is I've set up a very basic scene here with my basic inking render node, which I'm going to go ahead and render now. And as we can see, we have got the familiar shadow and line pass mix that I have composited here as seen in many other tutorials. So we're going to point out a few things. Obviously, we've got some objects in the scene. In our render settings, let's go to our render layers panel. We've got our familiar shading layer and line work layer both set to scene one, and in our shading layer, we've only basically got just shadows and colors enabled here because that's for our purposes for today. This is all we're really going to use. Uh, under line work, uh, we've got freestyle enabled. We've got two different line sets with two different sets of parameters. Nothing much has changed. Um, I've got the thickness modifier set to distance from camera. This is going to give us a little bit of variance. Not a lot that we notice going on here within the line thicknesses, um, but we're not going to spend too much time discussing those as we've discussed them in the past. And of course, what we have in terms of objects, our material is basically a tune shading material with a few parameters. Uh, tweaked to create this lovely tune shade. In a future tutorial, we're going to come back to this materials setting uh, to illustrate how Cycles handles materials very, very differently. And it will require some knowledge about compositing node structures because materials are basically built from the ground up in Cycles. But that won't be the focus of today's tutorial. What we're going to do instead is show the differences between the setup here and how we would recreate this particular scene in Cycles. So the first thing we need to do is duplicate this scene. Now, right now I've got one scene, BI Tune Render, and I'm going to go ahead and hit this plus button. And when I do, you get this drop down menu and you can either copy the settings of the scene link objects, link object data, or make a full copy. And we're going to go ahead and make a full copy of that scene. Now, obviously, we've got BI Tune Render 001, which I'm first of all going to relabel BI, sorry, we're going to call this Cycles Tune Render to differentiate between the two. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this scene in the Cycles Renderer. And while we're in this Cycles Tune Render scene, you'll notice now that we've got two scenes. We've got the BI Tune Render 
and we've got Cycles Tune Render. Under this scene, over here under Blender Render, we'll change that to Cycles Render. And a few things have already changed, especially under our Render Layers panel. I'm going to enable shading to illustrate what the differences are. Now you'll notice that we've got shadow uh, still ticked, but the passes have undergone a little bit of a restructure. We don't have all the passes that we did before because Cycles handles things a little bit differently. Under layer, we've got a couple of things. Uh, instead of our familiar, let, let's just go back to BI to show you to show the difference here. In uh, Blender Render or Blender Internal, under layer, we've got what we can include. Uh, and that includes, let's just hit shading so we can compare apples with apples. Uh, solid, Halo, Z Transparent, Sky Edge, Strand Freestyle, right? But under Cycles, what we've got is a little bit different. We've only got use environment, use ambient occlusion, use surfaces, use hair. Obviously, we need to use these surfaces, so that is automatically ticked. Under Passes in Blender Internal, we've got all the passes here, including Diffuse, Specular, Shadow, Emission, Ambient Occlusion, and so on, which we can switch on or off to make Blender Internal run a little bit faster or incorporate some of these passes, which we can then use from this render node, this input node. Under Cycles, however, things are a little bit different. The passes that we've got are the familiar left-hand side, but under uh, all the other ones, we've got four categories, Diffuse, Glossy, Transmission, and Subsurface. We are going to look at these in a future tutorial, but for now, we're going to leave all of those unselected. See, if you click on that, that means that Diffuse Direct is selected. But what we also have are these four boxes, Shadow, AO, emission and environment. We're going to make sure that shadow is selected here because we want the shadow pass. We don't want to tick AO, emission or environment because that means that cycles, which is already pretty slow in terms of rendering, will have to calculate these and we don't want to do that just yet. So we're just going to leave shadows selected. Under line work in freestyle, uh, we need to tick one very important box because freestyle will render everything in that layer, but it won't knock out the alpha. Still not entirely sure why that is, but in order to get a freestyle pass, we have to do one very important thing, and that is under layers in your line work layer, we need to tick use environment. And when we render, this will become very, very clear. But everything else doesn't need to be ticked. We don't need shadow passes, AO, emission or environment. The freestyle line sets can stay pretty much as they are. And so what we might go ahead and do is create a render so that we can see how Cycles renders that. And the only thing we've changed is in the line work, we've just ticked use environment. So let's go ahead and render that. Pardon the interruption, but did you know that supporting me on Patreon for just a few dollars a month gives you access to ad-free versions of these tutorials as well as the accompanying working files, templates, set libraries, and more? Your ongoing support allows me to keep creating quality content and to share it with a wider creative community. So click on the link below and check it out today. But for now, let's get back to the tutorial. So our render looks a little bit different. So why don't we take a look at what's going on to negate these shadows in our composite combined and what we can do to compensate all of this. So our shading layer looks a bit like this. The sun lamp seems to have softened some of these shadows. We're getting very lovely gradients here, something that may look great uh, in a more realistic setting but not so great for our purposes. What about the line work? The line work looks pretty good, um, and you'll see that the in using the, the use environment tick box actually puts this white background automatically under the line work. Without it, you'd actually get a black screen, so if you guys have gone ahead and rendered and uh, not heeded my warning about ticking that box yet, you're getting a black screen and probably leave comments like, what's going on? The solution is tick that use environment box and your line work render layer 
will look more like this. Uh, you'll notice that there is no alpha channel or the alpha is completely opaque in cycles when dealing with freestyle. Um, but it looks pretty good. So you'll remember, if we go to composite here, you'll remember that the way we had set it up in Blender internal requires that the shadow pass and the first uh, node of the line work render layer is the image and that is multiplied together using the uh, alpha of the second input. That is no longer necessary. The second part, this part here, let's take a look at this uh, so that we can see what's going on. Zoom out a little bit here, let's zoom in here. Let's bring this over a little bit. You can see that we're trying to utilize the alpha and this is where it breaks down. What we really need to do is use the image, but as we know, the image uh, is black on white and so we need to invert this. So we'll go ahead and hit Shift A, grab an invert node, and place it between the image output and the add node over here, set to RGB, because that's what we want. The composite now, you can see that the shadow mat indeed has the white line work um, around the shadow areas. And so now when we see our final result, I'm just gonna collapse this invert node so it's a little less messy by hitting this triangle here. Um, when I go ahead and attach that final output node, this is now the result. Looking closer to what we've got, but with one glaring difference. And that is that our shadows are suddenly very soft. And that's not what we want. So why don't we go back to our 3D view and see what's going on with the sun lamp. This is the other thing that we have to tweak. Uh, let's see how Cycles treats lamps. Now we've got our familiar settings, point, sun, spot, any area. I'll just go back to the Blender Tune Render first and, uh, and let's take a look at the sun lamp here. You'll notice that we've got our headings up here. We've got a color, uh, the light color, swatch over here, the energy, and a few things here, including what the sun lamp actually affects, in this case, specular and diffuse. Under shadows, we've got ray shadow, and we've got, you know, samples and softness size and all that sort of stuff to control. But under cycles, it's a little bit different, and we don't really want to go ahead and use nodes just yet. Let's take a look at what might be causing this softness. And I'll tell you right off the bat, it's the size. Light size for ray shadow sampling. This is where our softness is. This is what is actually affecting our softness. We want to drag that size all the way down to zero. We still want it to cast a shadow and we still want to leave this multiple importance, importance ticked. And so when we go ahead and re-render the shading layer, we'll now notice that our shadows are indeed a lot sharper with the exception of uh, this uh, this area on the sphere here, but this is sort of passable for our purposes. You'll notice that we've got very sharp crisp shadows, crisp shadows on the ground, on the cone here, and on the cube. And so if we were to compare the two renders by cycling between the two uh, scenes, if we go BI, here is our Blender internal render. Okay, nice sharp shadows, beautiful white uh, lines passing on into the shaded areas and our setup is as follows. We've got the shadow and the image of the line work with complete with alpha of the second uh, operation selected being blended with the alpha pass from the, the line work with the shadow pass over here on add operation uh, combined together with an inverted shadow pass as the factor for combining the two. That's our Blender internal setup. Our sun lamp is a pretty conventional ray shadow sun lamp with very low sampling and a softness size set very, very low. Okay, in our cycles render, which is only slightly different, we've done a few things. The first being that in the line work uh, layer, we've had to use environment. 
Um, in our compositing, we've only had to invert the image because there is no alpha channel on the line work and bring that down into our add operation with the shadow to get the white on black line work. And finally, our sun lamp, its size is set to zero. These tweaks basically allow any of the scenes that I've come up with uh, previous um, to render out this beautiful black and white ink work out of Blender using the Cycles renderer. Now, of course, there is one huge difference, and that is within render times. Now, on my particular MacBook Pro 2016 model, uh, the render time for this frame was only about 30 seconds, whether, whereas under Cycles, it took 2 minutes and 18 seconds. Uh, that's a factor of almost, let's multiply that up, one, two, three, almost five times as long. Uh, now, for still images, this isn't really a problem because you can sort of set and forget and then use it. You really just want to get that image out. But for animations, this adds a lot of render time to uh, a scene. Um, unfortunately, Cycles, because it's a physics-based or physically-based uh, renderer, uh, it takes into account a lot more than just a Blender internal. Um, but that's sort of just something that we have to grin and bear, uh, just because the Blender renderer is leaving Blender in a couple of versions, and we sort of want to future-proof our methods here to create uh, comic-style renders within Blender for up-and-coming versions. Now, of course, the new renderer, the EV engine, uh, is, is very exciting and everyone's getting excited about that, but at the moment, it does not utilize things like freestyle, so it's not ideal for our purposes, but down the track, probably in a year or so, um, I'm pretty sure that developers will come up with new solutions to get these sort of 2D effects. But that's, for now, neither here nor there. Um, hoping you get a lot out of this uh, particular tutorial, and I'll be back next month to discuss the next topic in our Cycles workflow, uh, materials. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.